The headlines. Buhari charges journalists on non-bias reportage. Dino Malaya arrives Kogi in ambulance arraigned in court. Elder statesmen advocate for Nigeria restructuring. Universities trade unions to resume indefinite strife. And in sports, Nigeria progress at world team table tennis. I am Cynthia Agwa with the PM News on television, Nigerian. President Mohamedou Buhari has admonished journalists in the country to be objective and non-biased in the reportage of news and handling of information irrespective of who is involved. Using the occasion of the World Press Freedom Day, the president pledged a conducive environment for the media to do its work. The note that responsibility is reciprocal and journalists should be mindful of fairness, justice and national interest at all times. Reflecting on the theme, keeping power in check, media, justice and the rule of law, the president reaffirms commitment to an atmosphere in which the media is free from harassment or any form of attack in the exercise of their profession within the ambit of the law. The senator representing Kugi West Senatorial District in the National Assembly, Dino Melai, was on Thursday morning conveyed into Lokoja, the Kugi state capital, in an ambulance by the police authorities following his discharge from the National Hospital Abuja, where he was confirmed fit for trial. The senator, after a brief stay at the Special Anti-Robbery Squad South Office in the North Central State, a guard of armed policemen was later driven by ambulance to the magistrate court's Lokoja and brought into court two of the senior magistrate court. Malaya is being arraigned for an alleged criminal conspiracy causing damage to government property, attempted suicide and escaped from lawful custody. A former Commonwealth Secretary General Chief Emeka Yaku, chieftain of the Pan Yoruba Organization, Afemi Ferre, Chief Ayo Adibanjo, the President General of Pan Ibo Organization, Hanese Ndibu, Chief John Wodo, and others have said Nigeria's future is hanging in the balance if its governance system is not restructured urgently. The elder statesman on Wednesday at the 10th anniversary symposium of the late Senator Abraham Adesanya held in Lagos described the crisis in the country, especially the incessant killings in the Middle Belt, as a reflection of a country in the brink of collapse. Ayako, in his speech, said Nigeria has retrogressed since the early 1960s in many areas, including education, health, security and agriculture, noting that revenue from crude oil exports over the years had little or no impact on the lives and welfare of the vast majority of the population. He proposed that the country be structured into eight federating units comprising the six geopolitical zones, plus a restored old Midwest region and a newly created Middle Belt federating unit. Non-academic staff in the nation's universities under the auspices of Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, National Association of Academic Technologists, and Non-Academic Staff Union on Wednesday this week. According to George I, the strike action became parallels of the failure of the federal government to honor its park unions five years ago. The unions had a marked on strike action September last year in order to demand implementation of the National Industrial Court judgment for the issue university staff school teachers, payment of end allowances, payment of shortfalls in salaries, and funding after the university system. More news reports after the break. Oracle is a one hour free consultation clinic on governance, the democratic process.
peace and security matters, and global strategic issues. Mr. Trump, please blow your trumpet. I have so many friends going to your countries. That is what we tend to do and achieve in this engaging and profoundly illuminating. The African Development Bank says it would support fertilizer production in Nigeria with $100 million. Mr. Hassan Haidara, manager of industrial development of the bank, disclosed this while speaking on the key industrial initiatives projects of the bank in Abidjan on Wednesday. He said that the production would be leveraging on the huge gas reserves in Nigeria to power the plant and the transformation of the raw materials, adding that the aim was to ensure that the agricultural sector in Nigeria as well as Africa was massively developed. Industrialized in Africa was among the five high priority areas of the bank whose commitment, commitment to having from $4 billion in 2000 to $2 billion as of 2017. Moving on to some sports news, Nigeria's men table tennis team on Wednesday qualified for the knockout stages of 2018 World Team Table Tennis Championship in Hamstad, Sweden, after beating Australia 3-0 on Wednesday. Chegun Teriola, Arena Quadri, Bodia Biodu and Amotayo Lajide finished second in Group F of the men's second division with nine points. Abiodun Quadri and Olaji Day got victories over the Australians to ensure Nigeria's quest for promotion to the championship division stayed on course. They defeated Argentina 3-1 before beating Turkey 3-0. They also defeated Bulgaria 3-0 but lost 3-1 to group leader Slovakia. The top three teams in the group qualified for the knockout stages. Liverpool reached the Champions League final after riding their luck to contain a file up as Roma in a 4-2 defeat on the Stadio Olimpico in Wednesday that sent through 6-7-6 on aggregate. The five-time European champion who will face holders Real Madrid in the May 26 final suffered the nerve shred in second half as Italians pinned them back and scored twice late on true Raja Nicoglan. The Colan second, which came from a stoppage time penalty, moved from Roma to within one goal of forcing extra time, but Liverpool, who clinched the last of their titles in 2005, held on to reach their eighth European Cup final. And on the foreign scene, Cambridge Analytica, the British marketing and analytics firm, announced Wednesday that it was closing and would file for insolvency in Britain and the United States after failing to recover from the Facebook data scandal. The decision follows weeks of intense pressure on the company, hired by Donald Trump's presidential campaign. After allegations emerged, it may have hijacked up to 87 million Facebook users' data. It claimed it has been vilified by the numerous unfounded accusations which toppled its business and left the firm with no realistic alternative but to go into administration. To end the news, a recap of the major stories. Buhari charges journalists on non-biased reportage. Dino Malaya arrives Kogi in ambulance arraigned in court. Elder statesmen advocate for Nigeria restructuring. Universities trade unions to resume indefinite strike. And in sports, Nigeria progress at World Team Table Tense. That's the news at this time on television, Nigeria. And do you remember, whatever we hope to do with ease, we must first learn to do with diligence. Thanks for watching. I am Cynthia Godio. Have yourself a wonderful day.